Hey there everybody, this is Leo over at TechLine, and a couple of videos ago, I actually did my 5800X3D upgrade over into my computer tower, which so far has been an absolutely great, perfect experience. I love it, it's been great for game, and even production, like for making videos like these. But I did ask you folks, hey, what should I do with my old 3600 processor? And of course, people said, build another PC, so I went, Okay, so I decided to aim for a graphics card that is from that generation that the 3600 came out in, which in this video is going to be the 5700 XT. I want to put together a small little system for it, kind of test out a couple of competitive 1080p gaming on medium or high or even epic settings, and just kind of see what it's going to look like. So let's just go through that process real quick, and then we'll talk about some benchmarks at the end. This video is brought to you by us over at TechLinePCs.com, where you can check out our store for custom mid-range builds, along with our consolation page, where you can fill in whether you'd like an upgrade, a new build, a pre-built PC, along with a budget, and we'll work with you on the PC of your choice. Check us out again over at TechLinePCs.com. Alright, but before anything, we gotta do some cleaning. That should at least help with most of the dust. I'll give it a scrubbing later. Also, got the old Wraith cooler from my AMD processor that I used to use. As we see, it's kind of uh, a little bit gross. So we're going to disassemble it and give it a full-on cleaning a bit more in depth. And now that we've got most of the dust blown out, we can just give it a good old scrub with the brush between everything and the fans. What I'm also going to do is also just take some time to unscrew the fan itself and rotate it 90 degrees so that way the AMD logo will be at the top and facing the right direction, whereas by default it's kind of facing towards the side and aesthetically it looks better when we just do this. Small rotation, pop it back on there, and we can snap the lids right back on and it'll be in the right direction. Good to go. Now for the motherboard, we're going to be working with the Gigabyte B450M DS3H Wi-Fi AM4 motherboard. We'll just get the 3600 nestled into its new home and pop that wreath cooler into the top. And we'll get ourselves a 1TB M.2 drive for storage. As for the case, we're going to be using a Deepcool MacCube 110. One thing I do want to point out about this case, even though it's pretty cheap, is that it actually has a built-in VGA bracket, as this says over here over at the front. So if you have a long enough graphics card, you can just right from the case itself, use this little lever and screw it in from the back inside to hold it up. Now the graphic card that we're using isn't that large or we have to concern ourselves with the size or using this bracket that's over here. But I think it's cool that there's actual cases that have this built in mind for you know other kinds of builds that are using such a thing. Now that we've admired some of the features about the case, let's just get the motherboard itself installed over on the inside and screw down. For the power supply, we're just going to be using a Thermaltake 650 watt semi-modular power supply. And we'll just get that all wired up and plugged in. And now let's get this Chonky Boy 5700 XT plugged on it. Oh, forgot this. <laughs> now we can get it plugged in. So I only just realized this after I was about to close up the case and power this on and try it on for the first time. And I wanted to remove the uh, the GPU bracket that's over here because I was like, well, I don't want this to be a problem during shipping, right? But once I removed it, I, well, when I started to remove it, I realized this turns left and right, which kind of makes my original point about it being a set pattern kind of null and void, which means if I wanted to hold up this graphic card, I could simply turn this to the side right here, as you can see, 
and then move the actual bracket up and then screw it in tightly over here at the back. And now this has a bracket that it's actually holding on to. And I think that's pretty cool. So even the uh, 5700 XT that you see over here can be held up by this little bracket that's on there. I still think I personally prefer the ones that you can just put right under here, just like wedge something in here and then hold it in place that way. But this, you know, again, built in, kind of cool. Don't have to worry about, you know, any of, the, any of that kind of stuff in there. It's already in the case. All right, up from there, we got everything built up, plugged in, turned on, Windows installed, and let's just go fire things up, play some games, and see a couple of benchmarks. First, I'm starting off with some Fortnite 1080p over on Epic Settings DX11, as this card does not support the DX12 mode, which is meant for DLSS, RTX, and some more advanced features, as the 5000 series does not have RTX cores. But I was averaging around 85 frames per second during my playthrough. Over in Performance Mode, if you want to get a lot higher frame rate, you get 135 on average. When I jumped over to Apex Legends 1080p, high settings, 90 to 100 FPS on average, CSGO, ran the benchmark tool for that one, a preposterous 387 frames per second of course that's going to work just fine for you warzone 2.0 highest or extreme settings i was averaging around 90 fps with some fsr turned on just to kind of you know give a bit of a boost in frame rate in that game as well and lastly when i was playing some overwatch 2 epic settings as we're seeing the gameplay over here right now 130 fps without a problem and if you want even higher frame rate than that you could of course lower a couple of the settings but for esports titles and even some modern games this is a fantastic card for 1080p gaming that's going to wrap it up for this one. I would definitely recommend the 5700 XT if you're going to be building any kind of a cheap gaming system out there. I found this one for about $130 online over on Craigslist, and I found another one over on the Facebook Marketplace. A bunch of markets where you can find these cards like this. But until next time, this is Leo from TechLine signing off.